mean, if Dan and I can do it, really anybody can do it. One income in law school, two kids. I mean, <laughs> honestly, honestly. And I think being able to show them that we can do it, you guys can do it, I think um, is very, very special to us. And, and it's very important you know, that we kind of are able to pave, pave that way for them and kind of bring them along with us, especially to our nieces and nephews, because, you know, they're the next generation and being able to show them that there's another option out there to create wealth, because you're not, you're very likely not going to create wealth from whatever it is that you learn in college. You're just not showing them that there is another way that you can create wealth while still doing what, you know, whatever it is that you love is amazing. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dan Wynn and welcome to the Financial Freedom Journal. Today I'm super excited. I'm super pumped up because I have the love of my life, my wife, Karina Wynn is on the show with us today and she's going to share her perspective on um, couples investing and why it's so important. So um, Karina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, would you mind just telling uh, the audience a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me, Dan. So for those of you that are watching, I know you guys can see that Dan and I are not in the same location. Uh, I am an attorney, and right now I'm at the Army JAG School in Virginia. I'm training uh, to be a JAG officer. So once I'm done with this training, I will go off and do great things for the Army. Right now, um, Dan and I, like I said, we're kind of located in different, in different areas right now, so that's just kind of part of being a dual military couple, so that's what we're up to now. Yeah, it kind of sucks. It, it doesn't kind of, it really, really sucks being separated. We've actually been um, apart for about six months now. And, uh, and geez, we're on just different sides of the state. So I'm in the far north. She's pretty much in the further south for the most part. Um, and, and it really sucks. But it's one of those small sacrifices or one of those sacrifices that we, we're making for a bigger in-state goal. And, um, you know, this is just a short blip on our journey uh, together as a uh, married couple and then also um, just you know while we're investing and doing other things so um, you know we've been together for like seven eight years married for like seven eight years I know I know I'm bad I'm horrible with dates so you guys <laughs> you guys that are listening I'm absolutely horrible at dates we've been together for a lot we've been married for like seven years at least um, Yes, yeah. yes. We've been, married. <laughs> We've been married for seven years. We've been together uh, almost almost 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So. But hey, man, I, I suck at dates and I, you know, I forget them, but, you know, she still loves me. So um, or <laughs> my, my downfall, you know, the things that I suck at, she's really, really good at. So and the things that I'm good at, she's also good at. So, you know, I'm, it's just a win-win situation for me. <laughs> but um. But yeah, so let's talk about investing a little bit. Let's talk about uh, just business ventures. And this doesn't just, everything that we're talking about today doesn't necessarily have to be only real estate investing, right? I think this is applicable to any couple that is, um, that is jointly in a business together, any kind of business, whatever business venture it is, I think it really applies. So, um, so speaking to our journey, at least, um, what do you remember when when I first approached you about investing about real estate investing and um, what your thought process was what, what were you thinking during that time so you actually brought uh, the prospect of investing in real estate to me when we were dating so this had to have been I don't know maybe nine years ago or so I think because we were dating I didn't really give and it wasn't anything that was in my purview. I didn't really give it a second thought. I just was out there, you know, living life. And uh, you continued on, you know, you continued learning about real estate. Um, you continued to do things like uh, go and like, you know, volunteer and kind of work on sites uh, while I was deployed. Um, and then I think when we were 
we were in Georgia. So probably 2015, I believe you brought the prospect of investing in real estate uh, in real time to me at that point. You had done, you know, at that point, it had been years of research, years of kind of getting your hands dirty and really kind of learning the game. And, you know, I think this is kind of with all, you know, relationships. I mean, this, it, I think it's applicable to all relationships, just kind of being there for that person and understanding, you know, where their heart is and where, you know, their desires are. And I really knew that this was something that you really wanted to do. And if it was something that you wanted to do, it was definitely something that I wanted you to do. See, that's awesome, man. See that you talk about uh, awesome relationships, dude, get you a Karina win, man. Can't have my Karina <laughs> win, but you got to get you somebody that's like Karina win, that's supportive of uh, the spouse. And, and we do that. I mean, that's back and forth, dude. Like, Absolutely. Um, so really, really quick pause. We talked about, um, dude, my wife is a beast, dude. My wife is a monster. And I just want to brag on her for a little bit. I do it all the time, but I just want to brag publicly really quick. Um, so, you know, my wife, well, one, she talked, to, we talked about our first child, David, right? Um, David was delivered on the side of the road. It was just me and her. She, Karina pretty much did all the work herself. I mean, literally <laughs> on the way to the hospital, it was like, I don't know, nine, 10 o'clock at night, uh, speeding on the way to the hospital, couldn't make it there, pulled over on the side of the road on a, on a highway. You guys can Google this story. Google Dan, Dan Wynn, Karina Wynn, Fort Stewart, Georgia, you'll see the story. Like we legit delivered a child on the side of the road. You know, my wife is a, a monster. And then on top of that, you know, she uh, talked a little bit about her background and uh, she talked about how she went to law school as well. What she didn't say was um, she was pregnant through her first year of law school and the, her dean pretty much told her that she, you want to tell that story? Uh, sure. I, so I went to a pretty small school in Savannah and um, you know the, the the faculty the professors um, and the students were all you know very close and I went in I started law school pregnant um, and throughout law school as I got you know bigger and I started showing more I spoke with the dean of the school and she essentially told me that there was a girl that had been in, um, there was a girl that was, you know, a year ahead of me and that she was pregnant as well. And she had, you know, she, once she had the baby, she, you know, dropped out or, you know, dropped to full time or part time or something like that. And that I should, um, really consider doing the same. But, um, she obviously didn't know me or my work ethic. Um, I don't really, I'm not a person that really listens that well <laughs> so um i don't stop just because someone tells me to stop i don't uh i don't change course just because someone tells me that i probably should change course um which probably you know has made some things in my life a little bit harder for me um but i do like to do things my way and uh i you know i stayed the course and of course, I graduated from law school, so I think it all worked out in the end. Yeah. So, um, and we talk about just uh, grit, determination, and um, people have limiting beliefs of what what you can and can't do for yourselves. And I think you are a, a extreme testament to uh, to kind of doing whatever wh doing whatever you set your mind to, um, if you will. And and I'll tell you one thing, like for you guys out there listening. Um, if you're, you know, if every day you see your wife who's pregnant and like you see her accomplish these amazing feats, dude, like um, it just puts you in a different mental space. Right. So, you know, Mark, I, I, I think I tell you pretty often, but like she motivates the hell out of me just because of just because of the nature of who she is, what she does and the, and the amazing feats that she accomplishes on, on a regular day to day basis. So. Um, when we talk about real estate investing and we talk about, you know, some people are asking me, Hey, how are you active duty and, and, uh, still buying homes and how are you still, you know, doing all these things and, and, um, and doing, having a business on the side, it's like, man, you don't know my wife. <laughs> That's why I do like you, you have, you haven't lived with my wife. You lived with my wife, then you know what's up. Um, cause like people say, um, when you when you hang around a certain people or a certain type of person or a certain type of people that tends to rub off on you and i think that um that has definitely helped 
uh, spark my, um, you know, my, my want to do, to do better and to my drive to do better at least. Um, but I, we got off a little, we got off a little bit off topic. So let's kind of, <laughs> I just want to kind of get back on topics. Can you speak to the importance of investing as a family for like, for those that, um, that are dual military and maybe one person wants to invest and one person's a little apprehensive, basically kind of speaking through what you went through. Can you help? Um, what, I guess, what would you say to someone in, in that situation? I definitely would say to the non-investing partner um, to really kind of be supportive. I, I mean, at the end of the day, that's really, that I, that really is, you know, the, the biggest thing is to, you know, always support your, 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 your partner or your spouse. I think that it's also important for you to also listen to what your spouse is saying. And if you have like, you know, valid concerns, then, you know, don't keep them to yourself, you know, bring them up because that's something that, you know, you guys absolutely need to flush through to the investing spouse or the spouse or partner that wants to, you know, start this venture. I mean, and it doesn't necessarily need to be investing. It could be, you know, really any kind of business venture. You have to be understanding of the apprehensions that your partner has and understand where they're coming from and where, you know, where they're, where they're rooted. So for instance, my apprehensions were rooted in the fact that we had, you know, two very small children that attended a very expensive school and I did not, I was not working. And so we were on one income. So my apprehension was, you know, what happens if we have to shell out more money than we originally anticipated? Um, and we and, did at one point. <laughs> we'll get and to we that did. story next. And, and we did, we, we, uh, you know, there, there are times when you're going to have to do that. Um, but I think being completely open and completely honest about what you're doing, um, not trying to sugarcoat it, not trying to make it sound like it's going to be, you know, all, you know, Skittles and cupcakes. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's not, it never is. It never is. Um, but yeah, definitely when you bring it to your not, you know, when you bring the idea to your non-investing spouse. Also, I think it's very important to understand that person and understand whether or not that person runs off of emotion, runs off of logic. Um, because essentially, it's kind of like a pitch, you know. Um, when Dan brought, you know, the, you know, brought the first house to me, it was, look at these numbers. I have a finance background. So um, I have a finance degree. I worked for um, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch for a little while um, before I went to law school. So numbers are kind of my thing. And, you know, he brought, you know, the numbers to me, like, this is what we can buy it for. This is how much it's going to take to renovate and look what we stand to profit from it. And that makes sense to me. Um, To someone else, it might make more sense to, um, appeal to their emotional side. Like if we do this, then we have the ability to, you know, take a vacation or we have the ability to, um, you know, we have the ability to, to buy the the new car that we need or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think that's extremely important. Very, very well said. Um, being able to communicate, uh, through the other person's language. Um, that's, that's definitely key. So, um, so we talked about, um, so we talked about, you know, those other couples that might be in situations that we were in at one point and trying to, trying to get them through that. What about just, uh, cause we talked about family in that, in that process as well. So what about just the importance of investing as a family and, uh, what is your take on that? Or do you have anything to say, um, in, in regards to, to that? Absolutely. I have a ton to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton to say about a lot of things, but this in particular, I think is very important. In the military, we talk a lot about uh, work-life balance, and it basically, what I gather from it is, you know, being able to balance your work and also being able to balance, you know, your family and your, you know, your other obligations outside of the military. And I heard something really great um, since I've been here. 
at the JAG school and it was kind of doing away with the idea of the work-life balance and thinking about it as work-life integration because you can't separate the two. You absolutely cannot. It, it, it is impossible to separate your work from your life because work is going to seep into your family time and your family and your obligations are going to seep into that time that is quote unquote allotted for work. And I think that's the same when it comes to real estate or whatever venture that you're getting into. It generally is going to be time intensive. It generally is going to be money intensive. So you've got to figure out a way to incorporate all of it together. And the best way that I think we have found so far is to incorporate our family into kind of everything that we do. When it comes to real estate, we have found a way to have time just Dan and I. There's times where, you know, Dan and I will we'll put the boys to bed and we'll sit together side by side, both on computers, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll look for houses. We'll, you know, we'll go through, you know, the plan for, you know, a particular project. And that's how we spend time together. <laughs> that is like legit some of my favorite time that we spent together really, looking over, really looking over is. properties together and running numbers together and stuff like it that. It really man. is. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I have so much more to say about it. Go ahead. Keep, please, uh, please keep saying, I, I love, like, uh, I love everything you're, you're, you're saying right now. So please, again, it's all about you right now. I want to, I want to get your perspective um, and your thoughts and opinions. Okay. So I think there's so many levels to it. So <clears throat> that's just Dan and I baseline, you know, our, you know, our intimate relationship. You add in our kids to that because obviously we want to spend as much time as we can um, with our kids, given our jobs, given our professions, uh, our profession, our professions demand a lot of time away from our family, away from our kids. So we try to use every single minute that we get with the boys, you know, we just try to maximize that time. And I think incorporating them into our real, you know, our real estate business, just kind of showing them, even though they're very, very young, just kind of showing them kind of opens their eyes to different possibilities, you know, in the world, really. I, I find it so awesome that we can show our boys like, you know, we're buying these homes and they're starting to actually understand that it's not just mommy and daddy buy homes and paint them and put carpet in them. It's, you know, mommy and daddy buy homes and we renovate them and make them nice. And in doing that, we're able to give other families a safe, affordable place to live. And they're starting to kind of latch on to that. And while it is, no, I'm sorry. Just one quick, one quick note. Also, the 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 whole sense of community there as well. So, imp by improving a home, which we've done a couple of times, we'll talk through about one of the deals that we went over budget and things. Kind of want to get your thought process on that. But that particular home example was run down, and now look what it does to the did to the community. I mean, the people that live in that four unit home. I mean, we just went there what a couple of months ago. And we were like, oh my gosh, man, they really like, <laughs> they really took the place over and like decorated it really nice. Yeah, and they did. And stuff like that. Like, I see what it, it brings a sense of community as well. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just want to touch on that point. No, absolutely. And so I think that um, <clears throat> showing our boys that it's not just about flipping a house, renovating it, you know, making it nice and, and, and making a profit off of it. It's also about us using what we've been blessed with to provide something else for someone else so that their families can be safe, you know, or, you know, something like that. So that's another level teaching. So it's, it's, yeah. So no, it's, I, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So it's, um, yeah. So I think, you know, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of levels. So there's that intimate level with just Dan and I, and then there's another level with our children. 
But then there's another level with our extended family. Hold on, before we go to the extended family, cause I, wanna, I really want to tell a story because this is like one of the most proud moments, like the proud dad moments um, that like, I'd say probably top five proud dad moments. And it was caught on camera straight up like impromptu wasn't, you know, uh, it, there was no rehearsing that it was completely it just completely caught me off guard um, I recorded a video it was called I think it's called um, I think it's like my first real estate deal or something like that and I went over the numbers breakdown of how to do it if you guys want to check it out just look at my YouTube channel financial freedom journal uh, just type that on YouTube or type in my name Dan Wynn on on YouTube and it'll come up but anyways the video was titled um, like my first real estate deal or something like that and in that video, uh, I, I was recording, I was going over the numbers and then in walks my eldest son, David, out of nowhere. I guess usually I lock the door to the office when I'm recording, but I, I guess I just forgot to. So um, he walks in and, and he's like, hey, daddy, da, 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 you know, and you know, I don't, I don't get upset at stuff like that I, if I got to re-record. So like literally the whole entire thing was caught on camera and I put it inside the actual video itself. But anyways, I pick him up and I say, hey, David, we're talking, about, you want to look in the camera? We're talking uh, about houses today. We're talking about buying houses. Do you know anything about buying houses? And he goes, yeah, I, I, I was looking at houses um, that I wanted to buy when I grow up. And man, like that completely was unrehearsed like i don't i don't i that was the first time i ever even heard him say anything like that and it completely caught me off guard and uh i'll tell you what man that was like one of the most proud dad moments that i've uh that i've had um that i've had like i probably top five proud dad moments and then even when we drive in the car now and like uh, well since then this was like i think i recorded this maybe like six seven maybe close to a year ago actually but um even now when we drive in the car, him and my eldest son, Eli, uh, both of them, they're like, Hey dad, we can buy that house. You know, Hey dad, we can get that house. That house looks nice. You know? And I just think it's so awesome um, that they're exposed to uh, wealth creation at such a young age. So this is not a, an unnormal thing for them when they get of age. This is just something that, that you do to create passive income, something that you can do to one, create passive income, but then also give back to your community and, and help others in the process at the same time. So I don't know that, that, that whole thing. And every single time we sit in the car and they go uh, like, what about that house, daddy? That looks like a nice house. Let's go look at that house. Like that, that is so special to me. It's so, so special to me, but um, all right, I'm, I'm off the podium. Go ahead. <laughs> so I think we were at third level, third level we at that at the third level we're talking about kind of incorporating our extended family so our nieces our nephews our um, our siblings our parents our cousins so i think it's very important that we bring them on the journey with us and not just kind of telling them hey you know this is what we're doing actually bringing them to sites um, having them help us, I think it's very important that when we do that, I think what it does is it shows them that this wealth creation um, is something that everybody can do. It's not just meant for, you know, people who already have money, you know, it's definitely for any of us. It's, I mean, if, Dan and I can do it. Really, anybody can do it. One income in law school, two kids. <laughs> I mean, honestly, honestly, I think being able, and I think being able to show them that we can do it, you guys can do it, I think um, is very, very special to us. And, and it's very important, you know, that we kind of are able to pave, pave that way for them and kind of bring them along with us, especially to our nieces and nephews, because, you know, they're the next generation and being able to show them that there's another option out there to create wealth, because you're not, you're very likely not going to create wealth from whatever it is that you learn in college. You're just not. <laughs> Showing them that there is another way that you can create wealth while still doing what you know whatever it is that you love is amazing being able to show them that there is a way you can do that i think is very special and it creates a path for them that kind of sets a tone that the, the sky is really the limit 
Yeah, man. Uh, so just, just to backtrack just a little bit, cause I think you're going to, you, you pretty, you probably hurt some people's feelings there. And now both of you, both you and I both have our college degrees right now. When people initially hear, Oh, you know, whatever you learn in college, you're likely not going to build wealth from it. Um, that probably is going to hurt some people's feelings. And, and can you expound on that and explain why that is? Because I'm very, very passionate about that. I talk about it all the time, but I'd like to hear, you know, so, hear your perspective or, or your thought process of that because obviously you got two degrees <laughs> so <laughs> so so why so why would you so why say that what is your thought process there and saying that hey um you're not going to build wealth you're likely not going to build wealth in whatever you learn in college so first of all i think that you're not going to build wealth off of a nine to five job which i think is what a lot of the majors in college kind of prepare you for. So my bachelor's degree is in finance, which prepared me for an entry level job at a fortune 500 company, which I got. Uh, that okay. job was not building wealth for me. That job was assisting managing wealth for other people who a lot of them did not have degrees. <laughs> so, I don't think that a lot of the majors are set for you to, to create wealth. You're not going to create wealth um, with a nine to five job. However, I think that there's a way for you to create wealth and do what you love. So I really, really want to practice law. I went out and I got another degree <laughs> and that degree is not going to build me wealth. And I understood that going in. Being a lawyer is not going to make me wealthy. Being a lawyer in the army is definitely not going to make me wealthy. Um, but what it, will, what, what, it, what it will do is allow me to do something that I love, which is practicing the law. Um, I was a paralegal in the army for 12 years before I went to, um, before I switched over to be a JAG. So I 100% knew that I loved the army. I 100% knew that I loved the JAG Corps. Um, and I couldn't see myself doing anything else. But I also know that I love Target and I love to shop. So I need to come up with a different stream of income that will allow me to do all those things. Big time. And, that, and that's so critical. That is so key. Um, understanding that, you know, you can have a high paying job and still not build wealth. Um, you Absolutely. can go to college and still not build wealth. And I think that's a common misconception. I think a lot of people, and it's still being pushed, that rhetoric is still being pushed out there that, hey, in order to be successful, in order to be wealthy, in order to gain any kind of, um, of, I guess, financial freedom for yourself, there's there's pretty much one path, and that path includes going to high school, making good grades, going to college, making good grades, and then going work for Fortune 500, which you pretty much outlined. But I think it's starting to become <clears throat> more recognized now that, hey, this ain't the way. People are getting upset. You know, uh, yeah. cost of living is is raising, but job, but uh, job. Um, Job prices, not job prices. That's out, like yeah, salary, salary. Yeah, yeah. hourly wages are definitely not exactly wages are not rate. exactly one hundred percent, one hundred percent correct. So um, I think people are starting to realize that hey, there's I've got to do something else. There's there's got to be something else. But I think a lot of people are just frustrated. They don't know what to do. They're just being frustrated and saying, well, maybe I must need to get another job, or I need to maybe I need to work doubles or something like that. And it's so it it, it just sucks to see, um, and. I don't, even, I don't just see that with people working nine to five. I also see that with people in the military as well. Um, you know, especially with uh, now that the, the um, there's no more, you know, you do 20 years and you retire and you're done um, and then you still get half of your base pay. That's, that's no longer there. You have to invest the blended in the retirement system. <clears throat> exactly. So um, I see a lot of people um, even, even with the, the standard retirement system, they'll, work they'll work their 20 years 20 years or sometimes even more than that they live this this great life you know they live to the max of their means if they're making eighty thousand dollars they're spending seventy nine thousand dollars and and you know saving a thousand dollars a year or something like that absolutely no savings um barely any tsp and what they don't realize is that once they retire um they get out and they they have to go find another job and and there's a whole set of I guess, uh, things that go along with that, you know, they, they get a job they don't want, they don't want, they don't get the pay that they think that they deserve. Um, so 
I guess, real estate in, in starting businesses while you're still in the military. The reason I'm a strong advocate, the reason we are strong advocates for that is because um, we're setting ourselves up for for a putting ourselves in a position to where once we retire, even before we retire, if we decide to do 20 years, it doesn't matter. Let's say we do 20 years, but we can literally retire at that point. Um, we're, we're, we're basically, we're slowly replacing our income, if you will, um, with, with passive income. So, um, <clears throat> I think it's extremely important for, for people to know that I know I just kind of rambled on there for a second, but I think it's really important, uh, to, to touch on that. Do you have anything to say? No, I think you absolutely, you know, hit the nail on the head is, you know, as far as people starting to realize that there is something else that they need to do, but not being able to quite determine exactly what, what it is they need to do. And passive income is it. It's not, you know, spending more of your time away from your family, spending more of your time working for someone else. It's definitely doing something for yourself and making money while you sleep. Big time. If you can't figure out a way to make money while you're asleep, you're going to work for the, your whole entire life. I think Warren Buffett said that. But um, so, I mean, in that, in this whole entire process, there's a lot of sacrifices that we make. Um, one, you already see we're in two different locations. We're pretty much, um, we're, when it's all said and done, we'll be, um, we will have been apart for a year. Now, obviously, like once a month or like even twice a month, sometimes, you know, we, we, we link up. We usually link up in Philadelphia or something like that, um, but uh, we still are separated. It's 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 a, a stressor. So, um, speaking of sacrifices, um, I know you like to live a certain lifestyle, and, and, and I think that you've had to compromise with certain stuff. Can you speak to some of the sacrifices that you've had to make uh, from your perspective, purely from your perspective, um, in in building this this portfolio, building this this little real estate empire that we're trying to uh, trying to get to. Absolutely. I think that there are two main sacrifices that we, that I have made or that we have made. And I think that these are kind of the same sacrifices that anyone that starts a business, or, you know, is, is going to make. And one is going to be um, a sacrifice of your time and the other is going to be a sacrifice of your money. So with the sacrifice of your, of your time, for me, at least, it was not necessarily that I was sacrificing my time. It was that Dan was going on jobs every, you know, every weekend. He would work throughout the week and then he would go, you know, on the site and he would, you know, whichever house we were renovating, he would go out, you know, making sure that everything was 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 going, you know, the way it should or putting out fires or, you know, whatever it was that he was doing. Um and him being gone, for me in that time meant that I had two small children to take care of by myself while trying to study for, you know, for, for law school. So that's his, his being gone, that time sacrifice really, really affected me and my ability to um, focus on school or just kind of being able to live a sane life for a little while. Um, and I think that it was very important that it was something that we spoke, we talked about, you know, before we really even started either of the projects, it was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to be gone, you know, every other weekend, or I'm going to be gone every weekend for the first four weekends. Um, and that's definitely something that I think, um, you and your spouse or you and your partner definitely want to talk about, definitely want to be on the same page because if you're not, it definitely breeds resentment. Um, if you're gone too much and your, your partner, you know, hasn't voiced their concerns or, you know, the fact that they, they need you there at least one weekend, you know, that definitely, you know, gone unchecked can, you know, definitely lead to, to resentment. It can lead to fighting. Um, and definitely a breakdown in communication. Luckily, luckily, just speaking on that before you move to the second point, um, luckily, I think me and you have always had a, a great 
great communication always back and forth. And I think we we both kind of compromise back and forth with certain things. And then um, as far as being gone every weekend, um, I, I think you did very well with um, understanding that, hey, this is all for a bigger purpose. Yeah, it kind of sucks right now, but <clears throat> it's all for a bigger purpose. And then also we had a lot of help. I, I would be, I would be doing, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't say, you know, um, thank you to our family. Like we got family, Absolutely. yeah, we got family in um, in Georgia and family in Florida that uh, while we're stationed in, well, even now, um, our family, yeah, he can done, know how they're yeah, <laughs> our family has done so much for us and has, has helped, like if it wasn't for them, it, it would be almost impossible for us to continue to do uh, what we're, what we're doing right now. Absolutely. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to my family, my mom, my, my, my dad, you know, both of actually both of our parents and both of our brothers yeah. and sisters, like all of them have pitched in, um, in, in along with our journey. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, our parents, yeah, our parents <clears throat> and our siblings, um, cousins, friends, friends, they, I mean, they come calling, like they will fly across country at the drop of a dime to help. Um, they will come stay in our sad little guest room for, you know, weeks at a time. Um, so I can study for finals or, you know, I mean, just, they, they have been absolutely amazing. And I could not have asked for a better family. Like time. even right now, Dan and I are, uh, he's in New York, I'm in Virginia and our boys are in Georgia, um, with my sisters, <laughs> which is like, I mean, you don't know my boys, but they are an absolute handful. <laughs> Big time. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, yeah th th thanks for the, thanks for the family. This is all, and this is all kind of for the family too. And that's why we're so passionate about how we talked yeah. about those three layers. It's not just me and Karina or me and me, Karina and the boys. It's also the external family as well. So like, as we build wealth and we learn these things, we take these and we teach this to our family as well. We've had our family on every job site, I think that we've been to. Um, I've involved, Absolutely. we've involved our nephews and our nieces in projects and exposed them to wealth creation and what this, this whole real estate things like, um, as, as well as both of our parents and our, and our, um, our brothers and sisters and things like that. So it's extremely, extremely uh, important um, involving them in the process because they've been helping out so much. So this is pretty much like the least that we can do is to, uh, is to show them the journey firsthand and help them when they're ready to, uh, yeah. to you know, take part in their own journey. So big time. So uh, part two of your sacrifices, you said part one is the time and then part two. Oh, part two is money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, obviously, when you start a business of any kind, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take capital. And generally, that capital is going to start, you know, is going to come from you. And with us, the capital 100% came from us. Um, and the sacrifices that we had to make were, you know, not living in as nice of a house or as big of a house. And those are still sacrifices that we are uh, making to this day. Um, or, you know, not, maybe not necessarily um, having as big of a car as we necessarily want or feel like we need. Um, and again, I think the important part of that is sitting down with your partner and laying all of that out on the table and being completely realistic about what it's going to take to start your business and, you know, sustain your business. Um, and really just kind of being in sync with your partner. I just cannot stress how important it is to communicate because if you guys are not on the same page, you know, it's inevitable that there is going to be a breakdown in communication and that is going to, you know, only lead to, fighting and strife honestly big time and um just to to touch on the compromises so like i'm very very comfortable living in the rattiest of places uh, like i can i can pretty much live and survive anywhere like for for example where i'm living in i live in a like a a small apartment uh, i pay like 600 dollars a month in rent like prop the cheapest that i could find um in rent and um just to kind of give you an example when um uh, 
well, to give you an example, my freaking dryers in a bedroom, <laughs> like, because I, like, I didn't want to buy a, I didn't want to buy a double stack washer and dryer. So I just put a dryer in a bedroom and put the vent out the window, basically when I use a dryer. <laughs> so, um, I so, would never fly. If yeah, I no. Was, yeah, if Karina never. Was, if Karina was out, uh, like, I'll live like a college kid. Like, I have no issues living like a college kid, probably like below below college kids and standards, if you will. But, um, <laughs> but Karina, Karina likes the nicer thing. Like any, like any other female, you know, Karina likes the, not just female, like most people do. I'd say most people in the world, I think like to live, um, live, live in luxury. If, if you haven't, if you have the, the chance and, uh, you know, now that we're both working, you know, this is, this is probably the hardest it's been to, to curb those, uh, those wants and those needs of of living in something nicer because now that we have the the uh, expense so for example um the house you want to tell the story about like where we're where we're moving to now and like how like that struggle this is a, a perfect example of i think compromise and sacrifice absolutely um so <clears throat> the next step on the army train for me is at fort stewart georgia and um uh, for those of us, for those of you who know us, know that we were previously at Fort Stewart, and we absolutely loved it. We loved the city that we lived in. The public schools were great. Um, my kids were, you know, at a wonderful, wonderful preschool. Um, it was very highly rated. Um, but with that, the prices of the homes are are pretty high for the area, and we had to make a sacrifice as to whether we wanted to stay in that area and pay, um, you know, a lot more money for, you know, the home that we were going to rent or, you know, move to a different area and pay a little bit less. Um, like a little bit less, like, like five to $600 less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think a yeah. Month less. Yeah. Yeah, a, a lot less, I guess, um, for um, essentially the same, the same size house. So um, we had the option to either downsize the home that we were going to be in um, and still be in the location that we liked or move to a location that maybe we don't, um, we don't like yet, <laughs> we don't care for yet, um, but will give us the space that we definitely need. Um, like I you know, like we talked about earlier, you know, our family is such an integral part of what we do, of, of everything that we do. Um, and they are honestly the reason that we are successful in anything that we do. Um, we need space for them. You know, <laughs> we need room for everyone to come and stay and celebrate and have fun. So um, I felt that it was more important to keep you know, a, a bigger, you know, keep a bigger space and just kind of move to maybe a not as great location um, rather so, than just kind of, you know. Yeah. So for those of you who are, who are familiar with Fort Stewart, we're talking about Richmond Hill versus versus Hinesville. Um, and for those who, who of you are military uh, and have not been to Fort Stewart, Hinesville is outside of the outside of the post, like right outside the post. So I'll let you I'll let your imagination run wild there for what the most, <clears throat> the common, the common uh, thought process of that is. So, and for those who, who are not military and listen to this, usually uh, places right outside of the post are least desired. Usually they're, you know, maybe not in the best, the best location. The schools aren't as good and things like that. So that's, that's where we're moving to, to save ourselves money so that we can take that extra money and put in, uh, take that, that uh, extra capital and put it into buying another income producing asset. Um, so that's, that's the reason why, and, and understanding that Karina, understanding that, I think that's key. If your partner, if your partner under, understands that, if you, um, if you are, are, are of the mindset of you want to invest and you want to buy income producing assets, um, and as long as your partner is on board with it and she understands the bigger picture and understands that she's going to have to compromise and sacrifice, then dude, you got a winner, man. You need to and wipe that up really quick because because uh, <laughs> it's just it's, you guys can build together basically um and and I, i'm glad that you're you you have that mindset and you know you understand um i know sometimes sometimes uh you're a little upset and sometimes you know 
uh, you're a little upset with some of the sacrifices that I ask and, but we always end up compromising. And I think that we, we usually end up in a win-win situation, um, a win-win-win situation because usually it results in paying less money or being able to save money elsewhere. We figure out something. So um, I think that's awesome. So um, is there anything else that you, that you want to, uh, that you think is important for any other spouses um, or any other dual military couples just in general, or, or any other couples that are building something together in general um, that you think is important and worth noting? Um, I know I've, I've <clears throat> talked about it a lot, a lot um, since we've, we've been on, and that's because I think it's extremely important. And I think it's communication and transparency. It's absolutely important to sit down and communicate, especially when you're not located in the same place or you are both kind of very busy and doing, you know, a bunch of different things. Dan and I are always doing so many different things that it's very, it, it's very important for us to kind of take the time to sit down, um, whether it be on a, on a FaceTime call or, you know, sit down in person and really we talk about our finances because, you know, financial wealth is, or financial health, excuse me, is one of the biggest stressors in a relationship. So we've made it, we've made it very, very, and a very, very important facet of our relationship to be very open about our finances um, and really ensure that we're on the same page. So we, we make it a point, I would say, what, maybe weekly to kind of go over, um, our bills and what we have going out, what we have coming in, just to ensure that we're all on, you know, make sure that we're, we're on the same page. Um, yeah, and transparency is definitely part of that. So when you're, when one person is going into a future that the other person may not necessarily um, be going into with you, you know, or, or, you know, going in full force, it's very, very important to be transparent about the time commitment, the monetary commitment, uh, really, really, you know, what that venture is made of and what kind of sacrifices are going to be made, going to be made or going to have to be made. It's extremely important to lay all of that out on the table from the get go. And it's not important just to lay it out from, you know, you know, at the beginning, it's also important to also do kind of um, check-ins to make sure that, you know, we talked about this and we said that, you know, this was going to be our plan of action. This was the time commitment, um, you know, check in and make sure that that's still okay. Cause I know for sure on at least one of the projects, it was like, you know, we sat down before the project started and, 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 you know, Dan said, look, I'm going to have to be gone every weekend for the first four weeks. Um, and that four weeks turned into 11 eight. months. <laughs> and it, yeah. You you're know, talking about Griggs? Are you talking about Griggs? Yes. So yeah, yeah our, our property yeah. in Alabama, um, you know, <clears throat> that project was supposed to be, I think it was a four and a half month project initially, yeah. which turned into end up being, I think 10 or 11 months. Yeah. But that being said, you know, I understood that Dan was going to have to be there, you know, week after week after week. But when I felt like I, I, I couldn't take it anymore, I, you know, definitely had to have the wherewithal to say, Hey, I need you to just, stay home this weekend because I'm inundated with, with schoolwork and these kids are screaming and I am about to lose my mind, you know? So it's, it's very, very important for both partners to be open, you know, to be able to, you know, to be able to communicate, you know, very easily like that. Yeah. I think, like I said, I think one of the main six, if I had to name like three things that makes our relationship work so well. Um, I, I probably would put communication um, up at least num number one or number two for sure. Um, just our ability to communicate. I think we do very, very well making sure we each know what uh, the other person is thinking and doing. And then also we do a really good job of tracking um, <clears throat> what we're doing through the use of like we have Excel spread. We have an Excel spreadsheet that we use every single first on the first and the fifteenth. Um, well, usually it's like 
a week before the first and a week before the 15th. And we basically know how much money we're, we're going to have. Cause that's one cool thing about the military. You know exactly how much money you're going to get, you know, for a fact, it's going to come on the first and you know, for a fact, it's going to come on the 15th. So what you can do knowing that you can, um, we put all of our, we put all of our, um, in, in income into an Excel spreadsheet and then we, we, um, spend our money before we get it. So, uh, there's no surprises. We know how much we're saving. We know where all of our money is allocated um, because we've already spent it before, you know, before it got here. So that helps us um, a lot. <clears throat> and we communicate that, obviously. Is there any, any last words, any last uh, final thoughts, uh, babe? Um, I mean, really just communication, transparency, and stay supportive. That's, that's all I got. What's the best way for our listeners and our viewers to, uh, to, uh, to find you? Oh, to find me. Yeah. Oh no. Um, probably the easiest way to find me is on Facebook or Instagram. Um, at Karina Wynn, C O R I N A W Y double N. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. I know you just brought a lot of value to um, other couples out there. Um, so this is Dan Wynn signing off.